What's up, man? Twenty five gamers. In today's game of the week, we are taking on the Seattle Seahawks here, and uh, I think he actually chose to kick the ball. So we know he's a smart player, and uh, definitely going to have an opportunity to see what we can do with this pistol offense and thirty four defense. So be sure to uh, tune in here and uh, try to pay attention to see how the scheme works. Uh, we broke down all the plays, and now it's time to see how we implement them in a real live game. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, when I was breaking down the depth chart, Michael James just makes things happen, guys. Uh, and a great way to start the game off with the opening kick return for touchdown. Amazing play by Michael James, and it's going to get us off to a really good start. Uh, pistol playbook, I really would like to go for two, just so I could show you some of uh, these goal line plays that I really like uh, out of this playbook. But we're going to show the well. Uh, the inside zone split is obviously my favorite running play in the Madden NFL 25. But now we're going to uh, go ahead and go to the wide corner. This is my main goal line play. What I like to do is I'll smart route McDonald's route. I'll put Crabtree on a little... Um, a little smoke screen, and then I'll put Gore on a wheel route to the left side of the screen, or swings uh, or a swing route. And uh, here he doesn't spy anyone, so I was going to try to sneak in there with Kaepernick. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. I've noticed a lot this year, guys. If they're running four down linemen pressure, it was. It's not really that smart to try to run through it. Uh, sometimes you can get it, but also as you saw right there, sometimes it can cost you points. Um, but guys. Um, Definitely, definitely, definitely enjoy this uh, gameplay. I hope that it can serve as a little bit of a teaching tool. You can learn from my mistakes, my successes. Uh, obviously, there we saw one of my good things and one of my bad things happen. So, obviously, make sure you're focusing and locking in on this film. I hope, again, I hope it helps you out. And now let's hop into the defense. So what we want to do defensively is we want to just start out with the base. Uh, the sink pinch zone is what I really like to call here. And I'm just going to set it up, the basic uh, pressure here, off the left edge. Just basic stuff here. Nothing too fancy. Just kind of seeing what he's got. Okay, so we see screen right. And that's probably... that's. You know, I've also considered maybe making the, the the first play of every game a maximum coverage defense, or or just the just something to kind of contain um, the quarterback or something like that. But you see there, just a great play by him, a good check down, and now we're gonna know he likes to run screens. So now we're gonna be able to adjust to that. Now we're gonna set up this uh, basic zone look here. We're gonna come over the a gap with Bauman, just kind of show we're here. We're also gonna call the disguise cushion coverage just to add a bonus. And okay, so we see a draw. Okay, and guys, it is never a bad thing on defense to force them into halfback draws because it. Uh, a lot of you guys are under underestimate the power of forcing an opponent to have to feel like he has to run the ball. Uh, in this game, running the ball is very effective, but it's also an Achilles heel to most people, especially me, uh, because it just causes so many fumbles in this game. And uh, definitely got to watch out for that. So, anyways, guys, um, again, the basic zone look. Now it seems like he's starting to get comfortable with that. So now we're just going to throw a man coverage. And, you know, the first drive is all about figuring out where he likes to go, playing some basic coverages, um, but nothing too, nothing too fancy here. All right, so here yeah, we're going to use her this. Um, we're just going to use her. I was going to try to use the guy on the halfback. Uh, we're going to have to put pressure on him ourselves. Can we get that interception? And that's why you get a Patrick Willis. And like I said, you know, that's I'm saying, and this is something that I sometimes struggle with, and I need you guys to really pay attention to that. I was actually having a conversation with Zan about this earlier today. Sometimes you have to call max coverage defense. Um, you know, I was really trying to, I was being really stubborn. I was playing Zan earlier. And um, it just, I was not playing a very good game. And I was really trying to send heavy, heavy pressure at, a, uh, at him. And he just had his reads down. And was just continually dotting my pressures left and right. And, and I just wasn't able to, I was not able to stop him. I got a couple of sacks here and there. I got a pick. But I never really felt like I locked him up. And it's because, guys, you have to be willing to mix in maximum coverage defense. Give yourself an opportunity to figure out what routes they're running. 
Um, here, the halfback off tackle out of the pistol strong. Guys, you know it's one of my favorite runs in the game. I thought it was, some people think it's the best run in the game. I don't think it's that far uh, gone. I think it's probably one of the best, but I don't think it's the best. I think the best is the inside zone because you can run it in ma many different ways, guys, and I really, really like the inside zone split out of this formation. Uh, here, we're going to show some triple option here. Just kind of see, just kind of fill him out. I mean, this is the situation where I do, I, I definitely want to go to a passing play, actually. So I'm going to go to my my pistol. Uh, where's the strong twins at? There it is. There's the pistol strong twins. I'm going to go to the fade smash. I have a feeling he's in a zone coverage look. And I'm going to try and set up the screen to gore, actually. Actually, he was in a man coverage, and that's why we have that post route. Make sure to watch the scheme, uh, full scheme breakdowns. I'll try to have links from now on in the description. I'm trying to do a little bit better job on my descriptions. I know sometimes they're a little bit vague, and that's my fault for letting them get to that, and I'm trying to uh, make sure that doesn't happen again. Inside zone split, guys. I really like this run. Um, in a no-huddle situation, a lot of times I'll just run it uh, just to kind of see how they handle it. And that's I'm, I'm saying, guys, you know, it's just something that really is very effective in this game. All right, we're going to go to our quick audible up here, look to hit these slants. And, uh, guys, I think I've underestimated, I personally have, I know I have, um, I think that we as a community have underestimated the power uh, of slant routes in Men NFL 25. Um, I have noticed many occasions where slant routes just beat me in coverage for no reason. And they also have noticed um, several instances where, uh, and here, see, we're going to get to use our X Factor formation, the pistol full house, guys. Mana my, it, it's argue, it is my favorite formation in the game. Even though I don't, even though it's not my main core formation that I will run in tournaments and stuff like that, I really, really want to. Um, oh, look at Bolden staying wide open. Dang it, Gore, Gore got in the way on that. Should have probably ran a zone read or something. That was kind of a stupid play call to go passing again. Um, but that's just part of the game. And, again, I'm just trying to show you guys some ideas for goal line offense because I know I don't ever really get into that. And I'm going to have a uh, goal line tutorial uh, sometime soon how to score touchdowns in the red zone. But, anyways, guys, let's get back into the – let's get back into the um, – the defense here. So we have a two possession lead. Uh, in, in this situation, you know, we've seen um, some slip screens and stuff like that. So we're going to send pressure left and then we're just going to contain Lamar New here. And let's see, a little fake run here. That's a pretty good running play. I've heard a lot of people in, uh, have had success with that. So definitely got to watch out for that. Okay. <sighs> All right, here. Sting pinch zone. Uh, let's go with the maximum coverage zone look on a second and short here. All right, let's see. A little shake, a little four verticals. And uh, right there, we held LB uh, or left button on Xbox 360 to. Uh, it's actually L1 on PlayStation, it's LB on Xbox. I've actually switched over to the Xbox if you haven't noticed. Um, but, anyways, what I'm saying to you is. Um, the reason I hit that, and here, this is where we go to our sting pinch. Um, this could be a very crucial moment in the game. And there you, there you go. Oh, we were close to stopping him there. Probably should have gone to the cat blitz. I know I like the cat blitz against the run. Um, but LB is, uh, I like to use LB if I'm one on one. If I don't, if I, if I, you know, have a, have a safety over top or something, then I will consider, um, I will consider maybe not doing that but most of the time guys I'm going to use the LB feature just because I feel like in my experience it's very very easy to get burnt over the top in man 25 even if you're in a two man under um, so I like to take advantage of LB versus leaving myself open to an opportunity to get to get in trouble with um with using trying to go for the pick and, and just absolutely missing it. Uh, here, just zone or just man coverage, draw back D, uh, and that's that's the risk you run, and that's fine. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what routes he's running, what's his tendencies, what is it that he likes to go to. Uh, here, I'm gonna go with the zone drop back now and give him another another look here. Probably gonna be a draw. 
There's your slant, and that's what I just said. I just got done talking about that. Slant routes, guys, I'm telling you, they're doing a very good job against zone coverage this year for whatever reason it may be. So now we've seen slant route. We saw that little wide receiver double move on the inside, and uh, so now we're starting to kind of get a feel for what he's running. Guys, there is no shame in giving up a touchdown in Man 25. Uh, I think I played one of my best defensive games yesterday, and I actually gave up 28 points. Uh, but it was one against, it's against one of, uh, a player who was actually really, really good. And uh, it was a Virgin Gaming uh, money game. And, oh, man, it was just a really good um, just a really good game by both of us. And, and, and ended up he ended up quitting in the third. And he was running, I think, the Saints playbook in the Snugs. And um, I know Zan for Forward Progress Madden runs that. Uh, I just got done playing with playing it, actually, and it's a lot better by him. Uh, but anyway, uh, what was I, I was saying he, that he had ran that. He ran that, that, that playbook. And, excuse me. Oh, there's Pistol Full House. Yeah, I love this formation. That was just a bad cut by Kaepernick. But uh, he ran that formation, and, and uh, towards the third quarter, I had absolutely everything he wanted to do. Uh, just was placed on hold because it was just lock every everything you wanted was almost always locked up. Go cap daddy, cap daddy. Um, why did I go pistol full house there? It was just kind of because I didn't want to come back out on the strong. Um, sometimes guys, I find it very important to mix up your formations. You know, sometimes I fall into that habit of always coming out in the same formation, and I do teach that as a technique. But you don't always want to run the same formation you want to audible out of the formation go into different sets go into different looks based off of techniques and things you see throughout the game all right here just a little drag to crabtree nothing too crazy and now we're going to quick hike that inside zone and remember clock always remember your clock management guys this is uh with six minutes coming up typically you're going to see about two more possessions uh, in this game after this one so uh, typically you'll see I'll, uh, he'll score or he'll at least have a drive to score and then I'll get one more shot at it so here this is uh, kinda just I wanna take I don't wanna take clock off but this is just kind of uh, set. I wanna set stuff up for later on in the game uh, so you see double wheel routes there that's, what I, that's a tactic I really liked out of this pistol playbook uh, Let's go with the slip screen. Haven't shown it to him yet, but this uh, this is uh, based off how he uh, how he handles this uh, is going to dictate what we do later on in the game. And there we go. There's Kendall Hunter. Um, didn't actually that wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to look. It looked a little sloppy, but it was a very effective call and uh, just right at the right time. What I love about the pistol playbook is. Also, the, the fact that everything is just set up, you, you you have to actually think about what you're doing, you know. You, there's not a set play in Pistol that you could say, this is the best play. It forces you to think, which, in my opinion, is a, is a good thing. Um, because you have to set up route combinations. You have to have an idea of what you're doing uh, before you do it. Here, heavy pressure. Just get the ball out of the uh, end of the flats quick. Unfortunately, he got... Uh, hit with a roughing the passer penalty. A little bit over aggressive there, and we're going to go ahead and accept that and move the ball up the field. Um, in this situation, I really think that he's going to give me uh, my man, uh, LaMichael James, on this halfback off tackle. Now, this is a play, I don't know if I actually have it in my audibles but, or in my scheme breakdown, but I know that this play is a very effective one. It's just the same thing as the pistol full house uh, halfback off tackle, and you see it's just from Strong. And there, I mean, it's just such a good run. And uh, I love mixing it in with the inside zone split. And that's a really good drive. So we notice against the screen, he kind of, he kind of usered the screen. So that means we can set up other things later on in the game with that, um, with that look. And we also saw, excuse me, ugh, we also saw that he was a little bit over aggressive, uh, a little blitz happy. So. Now we are kind of learning his his tendencies. And real quick, I'm actually going to be doing a couple, a series, uh, a new series starting this week. And it's 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 going to talk about the basics of defense. And all it's going to be basically, I'm going to teach you defense from the ground up. And uh, I'm going to teach you offense from the ground up too. But I'm, I'm going to start with defense, see how that series goes, and then I'll go to offense. But 
it's basically going to just teach you kind of some, some techniques and stuff like that that I've been forced to learn the hard way this season. And uh, so that we weren't, you know, we didn't have to really have to, we didn't have to know it last year, in my opinion. All right, but anyways, enough about plugging all the other series going on the channel. Uh, I remember here, um, you're not necessarily trying to lock everything up. You're just trying to kind of sit back, chill out, drink some Kool-Aid until that right time where you know you want to take away his uh, read. So right now, we're just going to be drop back zone, drop back man, uh, run defense. That kind of stuff is what we're using. Um, we'll use the base play every now and then, but... Overall, guys, this is just a, a, a really good base play, this stink pinch zone. I really like this play right here, uh, this look that I'm going to give him. And gives me an opportunity for a hit stick or something. But you see, I mean, this is just a, a, a drive. He's going to have to take these quick underneath stuff. It's going to give me the ball back um, with, you know, about two minutes left to go. And it's going to give me an opportunity to maybe get a touchdown. There he blocks his running back. And then we know that picks up the pressure. Um, unfortunately, Alden Smith missed a tackle on the backfield, and uh, Wilson's going to be able to get out of a sack, um, unfortunately, there. All right, here we're going to go with the base uh, zone pressure and just kind of see how he handles it. Look at that pressure. It comes in a lot faster, in my opinion, than some of the other pressures. Daggone, Marshawn Lynch breaking tackles. And that's what that's what was happening, you know, earlier today. Um, part of the issue with blitzing, in my opinion, it, it's not so. You guys know I love to blitz. It's my dream to be able to blitz every down. But at the same time, I'm a realist, and I'm I understand the fact that y you have to play some max coverage D, and it, you don't have to necessarily play even max coverage. You just have to play some 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 basic coverages. You could play just regular two men under. And yeah, there's a, is there a lot of openings? Yeah, if they know what you're doing, but isn't there a lot of openings if they know the adjustments you're making? If you put, you know, if you put a lot of people to stop one route, obviously you're going to leave another one open. That's just the way things work. Um, but again, we're trying to at least fill our opponent out, make him take longer drives, make him throw interceptions, make him take sacks. And this defense, especially this 34, and this is why I like it so much, uh, especially for teams like the San Francisco 49ers, is because it forces the opponent to, he has to almost, in a sense, take what I give him. He has to take, he has to take the deep stuff, he has to take the underneath stuff, that should have been an interception. So, in this situation we got second and ten, um... Obviously, you know, my, my main play for second and ten is going to be the drop back D. So we'll go to that right now. I've also been using the disguise cushion coverage a lot, guys, out of this. Oh, he had two routes, and I got caught in between them. Okay, guys, so now we're going to go to our man blitz. We're trying to generate pressure, heavy, heavy pressure here. And we're going to go press coverage. This is all out pressure. Um, this is just try to lurk a read. And there we go. Oh, that's twice now. We've been inches away from stopping him with that play. All right. So a good drive here by him. I'm going to go ahead and call a timeout. Trying to still set myself up for an opportunity to be able to score if he scores. Uh, you always got to think worst case scenario. Here I'm going to go to the cover two. I know I don't spend a lot of time talking on it. But down in the red zone, I just really like this play. Um, and there you see why. It's just a really good play. It, it's the same look as all the others. And it just forces you to... I don't know. It just, it just seems like, in my opinion, it really does a good job, in my opinion, against the... Um, against the basic runs. You know, obviously it's not going to stop the super difficult runs to stop, but it's going to do a good job against the basic runs. It's also going to do a really good job against the uh, pass out of this. See, and I just stacked the box, and there you see there's your pick. Oh, man, that's a big interception right there, guys. That's a huge interception. So we get an interception 
and now this is kind of money time. You've got to be able to score here. Uh, you definitely got to be able to get the ball out of your end zone. Uh, that's first. That is the first priority here is to get the ball out of the end zone. Um, we're going to come out in the uh, in the read option, but we're probably going to run the uh, inside zone split. All right, let's see what we've got here. Uh, I really like this look for the inside. Oh, shoot. We're in the wrong. Let's go to the pistol strong. I think I, was, I accidentally came out in the strong twins on accident. All these plays are very similar. They just show different looks here. And see, that's why the inside zone split, in my opinion, is one of the best runs because it's just, it's just, it just goes forward. It's just, it's just like, like the defense just has to give that up because if they don't give that up, they're going to give up something else much, much more uh, deadly. And there, Gore's just going to fight for us, get a first down. Now we have to kind of start watching that clock. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to Y corner out of that week. And there's my setup. Got my out route. I need to get out of bounds. Alrighty. Um, okay. So that's, we did a good job there of getting a couple of decent runs and then getting out of bounds. Um, now is where we're going to see if we can't possibly catch him off balance. Remember earlier when we said he's an aggressive player? What if maybe here we can catch him and get McDonald deep in the corner uh, for a big play? So we're going to roll out. Not there. We're going to throw back. And and a guy is a lot of times he'll catch that. And that's the thing. That screen, I'm so confident in because you saw his user player rush. We're going to be able to... We're just going to be able to force him to, he has to kind of give up the screen. Uh, and, and that's, you know, it's either the, the slip screen or the smoke screen. It just depends on what he wants to give up. And I just really like this play. To be honest, I mean, it's just a really great quick pass play. Uh, there, we're just kind of getting rid of the ball, get the ball out of our hands. And, and uh, luckily for us, he calls a timeout here. This is going to give us an opportunity to get into a different package and run that triple option out of that week. Uh, my opinion, it's one of the better runs in the game. All right. So here, this is our big play run that we like to use when we try to get big plays, but I really like this look for Y corner. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it, see what I can get. Cover two. What a play. That's... That's a great play. That's fine. That's a great play by him. Horrible read by me. I knew it was cover two, and a lot of times that's open. I don't understand. Uh, I might have. I think I made a poor pass lead. I think I made a poor pass lead on that. So here, more of the two man under. Just kind of, just kind of giving the, giving the underneath. That should have been intercepted. That's frustrating. That should have been intercepted. Um, here we're kind of just understanding the fact that he's probably going to get a field goal because of our bad mistake. You kind of can sit that when you give him the ball where we gave him the ball. But here we're going to try and just at least maybe jump it. But definitely got to watch out. We do not want to give up a uh, touchdown uh, with this clock. There's your pressure. Can I get that interception, Terrell Brown? As I've just said, we don't want to give up a touchdown. We give up a touchdown. Pathetic defense by me. Absolutely pathetic pathetic defense. So we've done a great job all game of forcing him to drive up the field. Unfortunately there, he made a stupid call in my opinion. Um, he, We both did because I had been showing him that he was going to have to take underneath, 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 underneath. And then my goal there was to jump on maybe an out route or, or something. But unfortunately, <laughs> um, we weren't able to do that. We got beat over the top. And that's just part of that. Some, that's how, what happens when you gamble. Oh, Vernon Davis is going to run a squib back. Vernon Davis is running squibs back. That's what I told you. Get that man on the football field. You get a stud like Vernon Davis on the football field. That's awesome. That is awesome. I don't understand that. That should not have probably happened, but we'll take it. Um, and we'll go into half. We'll go into half up two scores, which is really actually a really good uh, situation to be in. Here we're looking for Crabtree on the little corner out. Um, 
unfortunately he's not open. And that's just, yep, just bad deep, bad offense right there. So obviously right now we're looking at if you think six minutes is twelve minutes, twelve divided by two minutes typically takes about two minutes to three minutes per possession. Um, you look at about six more possessions, three for each side. Um, so what we're trying to figure out right now is what we want to do defensively here. If he is indeed going to have three more shots at this, um, what are we going to be able to do defensively to kind of counter what he's doing? I really do like the bend but don't break style of defense that this 3-4 uh, allows us to play. But here I'm going to send some pressure. I'm going to try and just jump some reads. Uh, let's see. I pass committed and they still run. Still acted like they were going to run. Commit. Reed got burned over the top. And I actually should have put... Um, I should have put... Um, called the Disguise Cushion Coverage. But unfortunately, I didn't. i got to get my backer here in a deep. Now we're good. We're just trying to jump the underneath stuff. Another curl route. Another curl route. Okay, and now we're going to go to the man coverage. Now that's going to be taken away. There we go. That's a two-man under purple look. And now he has to now he has to, to gamble and roll out with, you know, uh, uh, that should have been a fumble. I don't care who you are. Even if that's Tim Tebow running with that. Even Especially if it's Russell Wilson. Should have been a freaking fumble. All right, three tight ends. I'm going to gamble on my, and I'm going to use my run defense, the cat blitz here. Uh, remember, we want to use that safety. And there you go. That's why you call it cat blitz when they go with that run. So now we've got him second and goal. He's got to go about five yards. Remember, I really like to cover two. There we go. Force him to make something happen. Two spies, a flat. That's unfortunate. That's absolutely unfortunate. I don't understand why the flat zone goes. That's freaking stupid. Dang it. So a good drive by him there, um, getting that touchdown. We've we are gonna go with that sting pinch play, uh, the man look, and we're gonna man line and press it. Just trying to catch him quick. Just trying to catch him quick. There you go. And that's what I'm saying. It's the idea. We're throwing zone, 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 zone. Zone blitz, man, man, zone blitz, man, zone blitz, zone, zone, man blitz, zone, zone, zone blitz, zone blitz, zone blitz, zone blitz, zone blitz, zone max coverage. And then when we need it the most, we can call upon that man play. It just takes them away for that long, and you get the sack. Uh, okay. So here we have, and that's what we, we were kind of predicting that he would probably be able to score. Um, obviously, I would have liked the defense to be a little bit more resistant, but that did not happen. Um, but now that now seeing the struggles he's having with that sting pinch man blitz, we might mix it in a little bit more um, just because he, sh it seemed to throw him off balance, uh, which is exactly what it was meant to do. And it definitely worked for what we needed to do. Unfortunately, we called it on the um, on the uh, two-point conversion rather than the first or the second down along. More of the inside zone split. Um, I cannot emphasize enough how much I love that run. Double wheels here. Corner blitz. So we'll just dip it to the back. We got LaMichael James out there to block. That's a concept that I got from Ryan Dykes last year. Shared it with me from the – he was using it from the strong close. I added it to my idea and uh, – I added it to my playbook, and now I'm using it out of a lot of different formations. And that's why you get guys like Ryan Dykes and uh, Steven the Beast and guys like that who can help you out and work with you and, and play with you in this game and, and help you get better. Another corner blitz. You must be trying to stop that um, – must be trying to stop that run. That's what I'm saying. That's inside zone split. That's what it'll do to you. It forces them to have to commit to stopping it, which then opens everything else up. And if you're smart and using your passing plays, um, 
it can really be a difficult uh, offense to stop. This is a very stupid offense, I like to say. Uh, it's a dumb-it-down type of approach that really focuses more on the strategy behind offense um, and not necessarily the, 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 the effectiveness. Uh, all right, here, nobody's open, nobody's open. I got Gore. But, yeah, I don't think Kaepernick could have made that throw. But um, right there, that's one of those situations where you have a mobile quarterback. You try to give your guys time down the field. Unfortunately, they didn't come open, and that's just part of the way the game goes. All right, here I really want to give uh, – I wanted to hope – I was hoping that would be uh, L LMJ, LaMichael James. But it's not. We're going to just go ahead and pound it with Kendall Hunter here. That's a that's a good run. I mean, that's that's a couple yards. Like I said, you know, it works a little better with Gord and Lamb J, in my opinion. But definitely, definitely, still a good call because now we're still in the third and manageable, and we have a lot of different ideas, a lot of different things we can do to beat it. Here, I'm gonna go to that fade smash and hope. Actually, he's been a lot of man coverage uh, this game, so we're gonna check into our man beater. Let me see if I can remember it. I hope I can remember it. I think it was Y corner, right? I don't know. You guys are probably screaming at me now. I think it was, yeah, it was smash Y corner. There we go. Oh, that's so dumb. You should not go for this, but I, I'm going to go for it because I have an idea of what he did there. He's base aligning the, the D. So it should give me this post route. Where am I at? Where's the pistol strong at? Where's the post route? Where's the pistol? There it is. Fade smash. I should have this post route wide open. To sell it. If not, hopefully one of these wheel routes comes open or something. Alright, so fag D. And we'll just be patient. Nobody's blessing. No reason to... No reason to... Worry about it, because nobody's bringing pressure. Now one's bringing pressure. This is what I call Swerve the Spy. See that? Swerve the Spy. And then that's just a, a situation there where a lot of people like to use that. I uh, basically just run one way, and then when the spy starts to come, you cut back hard the other way. Uh, it's a pretty simple concept to grasp. It's very easy to do, uh, but it's very effective and it's very useful for situations like that when they run max coverage. You don't have anything open. Lamb J, Lamb J, fight for me, Lamb J. All right, why did I call a screen there? Felt like he would immediately bring pressure because of the result of the last play. I felt like that was going to be a situation where he was going to send the goons because he was ticked off because I just converted a third in like 10 or 14 or whatever it was. Um, now back to the run, back to the well, as Gibbs would say. You've got to get back into your main your main offense. This is this run right here is the source of all the other plays we can use. Yes, it's not a run that's going to get you 75 yards a pop, especially against disciplined defenses, but it is a run that you can use that is very very effective and it will get you enough runs to make it worth your while. I'm trying to find that read option out of the week. But I don't know where it's at. Here it is. Read option. I need some. I needed something with the quarterback. So offsides on him. I got lucky on that one. Free play. Um, third and four coming up. I'm gonna call this play. I don't know why it's not in my quick call. I thought I set them up. Uh, I think it's from the week twins. Uh, and the play is the triple option, right? Right, right, maybe, no, wrong. No, it's from the, sh is it from the Strong Twins? No, that's, no, that's the wrong one. Where is this play? I don't know where I, oh, it's from just the regular week. Yeah, it's from the regular week. Where's the week? There it is. This triple option right here. Absolute. Oh, excuse me. Absolute money in the bank right here. This is a really good triple option. Either way you go, they're really good runs. 
Here he gives me the inside with Gore, and I'm going to power head uh, for a couple yards. Now we can go no huddle. I'm going to go to my favorite play, uh, favorite run in the game, the best run in my opinion in Madden 25, and we're going to push forward for two yards, and uh, we're going to get a conversion here. And there you see, that's why I like to run, because you can run it in several different ways. That time he overplayed me to the left side of the screen. And so I just easily cut to the right side and took what the defense gave me. Now coming up here, uh, six minutes left with a one possession lead. Uh, hopefully after this drive it'll be two. You're going to see me get a little bit more, uh, I have to get a little more complacent. You know, I've been very passively aggressive uh, all game. And you're going to see that continue here. Because I'm not going to put the ball in harm's way if I don't need to. But again, I'm not going to just sit there and take yard-like losses. So it's kind of a fine line I'm walking right now. There's the Michael James. Are you serious? Man, thank you, Anquan Bolden, you savior. Okay, guys, I want you to go to the Seattle Seahawks depth chart. I want you to tell me how many players on their team have 90 hit power, and I want you to leave it in the comments. Because I am mind-blown at how many fumbles they cause. But luckily, Anquan Bolden was there to save the day, and we go ahead and score here with Lamb J. But the fumbles that Seahawks cause, I mean, LaMichael James doesn't have the best carry, and I mean, he did get a nice hit, but man, I don't know. I think I fumbled twice this game so far. I know in a lot of my VG games, that's that's normally how I lose. I get I uh, people cause fumbles for because of computer hit sticks. So anyway, um, but there I was just gonna be running the ball. Um, the reason I checked into that Y corner was because I had to get something. I had to move the ball. Uh, I had to at least get five six yards to set me up in a decent third down situation. I could run or pass. So if I didn't get a good look for the pass, like, I did get a good look, but if I didn't, I was going to run with my quarterback. Okay, so we've seen out routes here, so we're going to make a, a little quick adjustment. And we're going to put Whitner here in a purple zone. And, oh, oh, pick it, oh! And you saw it took away that little, uh, little out route he was throwing and was able to lock that up. Now... Uh, I need to uh, go ahead and send pressure. Um, and I need to go ahead and call that disguise cushion. I'm going to drop Bauman deep, and I'm just going to use her underneath with Willis. This is an adjustment because of the seams he's been throwing a lot this game. There's that, and there you see the corner route was not open. That's what he was going to throw. Corner route not open, the pressure comes in, and that's the concept of the zone blitz, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in this situation... I will kill you <laughs> if I find out that you are not sending pressure on third and 19. You gotta send pressure. Remember, he's been going out route. So we got Reed in purple, we got Whitner in purple, and we got the disguise cushion look on, and we got pressure show coming off the left edge. There's your there's your out route, and there's a dropped interception by Whitner. And now we kind of have it, and that's what I'm saying, guys. What we did earlier in the game told us exactly what he was going to do now. And that's why it's so important that you guys play a little bit of coverage defense early on in the game so that when you get in these situations, you're able to make these important adjustments and lock up some of these best, uh, some of the best players in the game. I'm not saying that this guy is the best player in the game. I'm just saying uh, that's, the ta that's a tactic you have to use to beat players that are better than you. And there's the sack, and this, like, this is going to be a quit. So another great game of the week, guys. Another great opportunity for you guys to learn from some of my mistakes, some of my successes. Let me know what you guys thought. I know that the offense was a little bit boring, but that's part of the way that I like to run the pistol playbook. In my opinion, it bores you to death and forces you to have to make uh, aggressive adjustments on defense. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe for more Madden 25 tips, content, and free playbooks. Break play free playbook breakdowns. We'll see you guys in the future. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow with another great Blitz of the Day. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.